Hi folks, welcome back to my World of Tanks replays with the Mighty Jingles. Today we're looking at the VK3001H, the Henschel German medium tank, one of three German medium tanks at tier 6, with the other two being the distinctly unimpressive 3001P, and the actually not bad at all, in fact rather damn good, 3601H. This is the third one, the 3001H, and you don't see many of these on the battlefield. Um, and there's, there's a, is there a reason for that? Well, let's have a look and find out. Where does it actually sit in the research tree? I mean, does that explain why you never see these things? Well, um, it actually sits in a fairly prominent place in the research tree. If you're going to go down the German medium tank line, you pretty much need to go through the 3001H. Uh, you don't have to. You could go through the 3601H, and then the 3002DB, and then the Panther. But that means you've got to grind out XP on two different tier 7 mediums to go any further down the medium tank line. And that seems like a bit of a bit of a drag. When you can just get the 3001H and go straight to the Panther, Panther 2, blah, blah, whatever. So it, it seems like you should see more of these things around, and yet you really don't. Um, so why is that? Well, let's have a look at the stats. Maybe that will explain it. Um, it does have a lot of health, 750 hit points. Um, not as much as the 3601 h which has 850, but you know this thing is this thing should have been a heavy tank. The 3001 h is, is definitely not a heavy tank. You know, it's it's very much a medium tank. In fact, there's a case could be made to say this is actually a light tank with a medium tank gun. Um, but 750 hit points is quite generous. Um, do I have any other tier six mediums? I don't think I do. You know, French. British... Eh, no, clearly not. Mm, no, I don't think... Oh, I do have to have the tier 6 mediums, of course. I've got the Americans. Let's have a look at the Sherman Jumbo. 760 hit points. Mm, easy 8, 750. Yeah, it seems about standard, then, for tier 6 medium tanks. Okay. Nothing wrong there. It's got a standard amount of tier 6 medium tank health. Uh, it only weighs 34.72 tonnes, and it has a 650 horsepower engine. There are two engine upgrades for it, they're both Maybach HLs. One has 610 horsepower, the other has 650. With the stock engine only having 585. So, yeah, it's a pretty powerful engine. And it means this tank does get to do 55 kilometres per hour. So it is quick. No question about that, it's a fast medium tank. It's also very manoeuvrable, with a 40 degree traverse speed. So. It's as if I, I'm starting to see a pattern emerging here. This is a quick, brawling medium tank. Um, actually, no, it isn't. No. Because the turret only turns at 25 degrees per second. With the one turret upgrade. There are two turrets. There's the stock turret there, the standard turret, and the big turret. And with the big turret, the traverse speed is 25 degrees. So, yeah, you can circle bigger tanks, no problem. But you can't. Bring the you can't keep the gun pointed at them because the turret doesn't turn fast enough. And if you slow down enough to get the turret pointing at them, they will shoot you. And this thing has shit for armour. 50 millimetres at the front, 30 at the side, 50 at the rear. Um, in fact, <laughs> it, it, if you just think of this thing as not having any armour at all and, and play it accordingly, um, that's probably the best way to do it. Because armour of that thickness at tier 6 on a medium tank is just... Um, it's not armour. It's purely there to stop the crew from falling out of the thing when it turns corners. <laughs> it, it, it's hopeless armour. In fact, the only place that this thing has any armour worth speaking of is the front of the turret. When you have the upgraded turret, which is 120mm thick. Even the sides of that are only 60 and the rear is only 60 So it's, it, this tank does not have any armour. So it can't brawl, or it can't brawl effectively, or it can't brawl for long, because if it slows down enough to point this big old gun at whatever it's circling, that basically means it's had to stop, <laughs> because the turret turns so slowly. And it'll get shot to crap, because it doesn't have any armour. So it's not a brawling tank. Um, well, do we have to use that turret? It's a good question. The standard turret has a 49 degree traverse. That's almost double the traverse of the big turret. Well, okay, can, can we play it with the standard turret? Well, you can, but not with that gun. 
the L56 88mm gun will not fit the standard turret. Well, okay, what is the other gun selection? Well, it's got piece of shit, piece of shit, piece of shit, 75mm L70, 88mm L56. Um, I mean, this 75mm KWK 40 L48 here is the turd of a gun. The absolutely horrific piece of crap that the German tier 5 mediums are stuck with. Uh, the L43 isn't even as good as that, isn't even as good as that. So I'm not even going to waste your time looking at the L43. And then you've got the derp gun, which the uh, Panzer IV equips and then prays it doesn't get into a tier six or seven game. Um, which leaves the L70, which is a good gun, um, but it should be a tier five gun. Uh, and instead, here it is at tier six. And it's not bad. And you know, with the rate of fire. <sighs> See, the rate of fire of the L... There's the L70, and here's the 88. And it's got better penetration. Slightly more than half the damage. Much better rate of fire. Much more accurate. Same aiming time. So, that gun on this tank with the standard turret, bearing in mind that this thing can do 55 kph and turns very, very quickly, 40 degrees per second, with the standard turret that turns faster than the tank does, yeah, that, that might make this thing into a really fast, agile, little brawling medium tank. So that that could work with that L70 75mm gun. Well, yeah. And there it is. But guess what? You can't fit that gun <laughs> with the standard turret either. If you're going to fit the standard turret on this tank, You're stuck with the same piece of shit guns that the Panzer IV and the Panzer III slash four have to endure at tier five. So, so you can't do that. So, what's this tank for? I mean, it's not a brawler. We've already established that. The only two guns on it that are that, that that could be used for brawling can't be used for brawling because the only turret you can fit on the thing and have that gun on it is too too slow to keep the gun pointed at the target that you're circling. Um, so it's not a brawling tank. Well, okay. Well, it's still very fast and very agile. Perhaps it's a hit-and-run raider. Well, not really, no. Because that gun has a 2.3 second aiming time and 0.38 accuracy, which isn't... It isn't terrible accuracy, but it's not very good either. And in order to... You basically... Using this thing as a hit-and-run raider means zoom up to something, stop, aim, fire, and get the hell out of there. But it's the whole stop, aim, fire bit, because if you don't, you will miss. That gun is not accurate enough. Uh, you will miss. And if you do stop, aim, and fire, it's got 2.3 second aiming time. And if this thing stops, it just dies, because it only has 50 and 30 millimeters of armor. So it's not a hit-and-run raider either. And it's not a brawler. So, what's it for? Uh, I just, I don't get it. Well, okay, is it a support tank? A second line support tank? Is it a sniper? Well, it's not a bloody sniper, not with that gun. 0 0.38 accuracy, just, no. No, it's not. And, and let's not forget, right, this is, this 88mm L56 gun, this is actually the gun that the Tiger had. And the Tiger knocked out Shermans from two three kilometers away with that gun. 0 0.38 accuracy, my arse. Um, but you know, that's wargaming for you, and the German guns. So, what the hell is this tank for? It's not a brawler, it's not a hit and run raider, it's not a sniper. What are you supposed to, how are you supposed to play this tank? I just, I just don't get it. Um, it's got light tank armor and a medium tank gun. And light tank performance with heavy tank turret. I mean, it's just it's it's just this mess of stats. It's as if it's as if the designers all took little slips of paper and they said, right, everybody write down a tank stat, and they all wrote down this a, a different stat of a different tank, and a different part of a tank on a piece of paper, and they just threw them all into a hat and said, right, everybody pick one. Okay, and that's the tank we're going to make, and, and this is what came out. So. And yet, you know, I've done well in this tank um, a while ago, um, back in patch, certainly prior to patch 7.3, 7.2, uh, 
when I last had this thing and eventually sold it um, so I could buy bigger tanks. Uh, I've even got Top Gun in a game with this thing. And that was back when this thing used to get into tier 9 games. But I am positive that this 88mm gun has been nerfed. Um, I don't remember it being nerfed, but I don't sit there analysing patch notes. But I'm sure, absolutely certain, it never used to have 0.38 accuracy. I'm sure it was 0.36. It was never that bad. Um, and this just seems to be happening to the German stuff. This little gradual nerfing process to the accuracy of the guns. It's very depressing. Um, but yeah, I have been able to do well in this tank, but I find it to be the exception rather than the rule. It's a difficult tank to do well in because you're never quite sure exactly what you're supposed to be doing in it. Because of the just seemingly random, arbitrary nature of the stats of the thing. So, yeah, I've, I mean, I, I bought it again because I thought, well, I can remember having fun in this tank, and I, I you know, I've only done one review of Tier Six German Medium, the Three Six Zero One H. I've I've driven this before. I've driven the Three Thousand and One P before. That, that Three Thousand and One P is one of the most awful grinds in the game. Stock is absolutely horrible, um, and it's fully upgraded. It's not that good. <laughs> And I thought I'd give them both a go. And I, I, I meant to buy the 3000 p bought this one by accident, um, and thought, well, you know what, I did have some good games in it. I'll stick it out, see what it's like now with even better matchmaking. And uh, and these are the games I've had. So here's one of the first games that I played with the 3001H when I rebought it after patch 7.5 came out. And this is a patch 7.5 replay. Now, unfortunately, there's something... I don't know, I, I, I can't explain it, I don't know why, but after patch 8 came out, all of my patch 7.5 and earlier replay files, the target mark has suddenly stopped working, so it's very difficult to see how much health any of these tanks have. Uh, it's going to be an issue for the replay contest as well. Any guys who have submitted replays from patch 7.5 or 7.4, it's going to be difficult to see what sort of health the state of the tanks are when we're watching the replays, but hopefully that isn't going to matter too much. But anyway, here we go. Oh, there's another 3001 H there. In fact, there's... No, there's only two of us. Other ones are 3601 H. You don't see many of these tanks on the battlefield. It's quite surprising, because because of where it sits in the tech tree, you'd expect to see more of them, because people pretty much have to go through this to get to the rest of the mediums. But, you know, we're here to find out why you don't see as many 3001 H's. And hopefully, by the end of this review, we'll understand why that's the case. So, you'll have no problem being the first one into the town on Lakeville driving this tank. It is very, very quick. You don't necessarily want to be the first one into the town on Lakeville when you're driving this tank, though. Because it cannot take hits at all. Okay, so we penetrated that Type 59, and he doesn't appear to want to stop. <laughs> Would you if you were him? And another penetrating hit. So let's give chase. He seems to just want to pile through, and, and I must have to admit, if I came screaming around that corner and running at this lot, I'd be doing the same thing. Get another hit, and we're going to give chase. And it looks like his engine's damaged. He's not going very quickly at all now. So that wasn't bad. What was that? Four, five penetrating and damaging hits on a Type 59? So, you know, this gun can do well on this tank. But, you know, even a broken clock tells the right time twice a day. So I'm not going to judge the performance of a gun on a tank just, you know, on the basis of one battle. But that was an encouraging start. And there's an AMX-12T, and ooh, I think that's an SU-100 around the corner and bounced off the AMX 12T. And now watch what this guy does to us. And of 
course, artillery decides to start firing at us. And luckily, one, this guy's on fire, two, he's reloading. And that allows us to get our second kill. But now, we're on something like 20% health. Because, <laughs> clearly, tier 6 medium tank in a tier 8 game like this, artillery has nothing better to shoot at. Most of our health there was taken off by the M41 artillery. And you're going to find, throughout the course of this review, that that is not an isolated incident. Artillery love easy kills as much as anybody else. Even when we're clearly not the biggest threat, you are going to get shot at by artillery driving this tank like you would not believe. And that's, you know, that's pretty much it. That's that's our contribution. With We don't even get a shot at anything else for the rest of this game. Um, and we win quite easily, quite spectacularly easily. I mean, we're winning 10-3 at the moment. This was a good team, um, a hopeless enemy team. So I'm just going to skip to the end so you can see the results. And there you go. And that wasn't bad. It was my first win of the day, but it was still less than 1,000 XP but not much less than 1,000 XP and only 20,000 credits. Um, ammo and repairs, yeah, we're talking about 10,000 credit profit with a premium account. Eight shots fired, all eight hit the target. Took four hits, uh, a couple of bounces from the AMX-12T, which is quite lucky because an AMX-12T is more than capable of killing one of these things. So it's a kind of an encouraging start. Um, good result against that Type 59. Uh, we did do a lot of damage to him, and we were quite lucky to penetrate with every shot that we fired. In fact, we were quite lucky to even hit with every shot that we fired. But, you know, uh, I'm not going to argue. I'll take luck over skill and judgment any day of the week. <laughs> so let's see, let's see how else we did with this thing. This is something you never want to see when you're playing the 3001H. You never want to see the word Himmelsdorf appear on your screen. This is not a very good environment for a tank with such crappy armour. You know, tight city streets with narrow fields of fire, no cover to hide behind. Ugh, no. Now you might think going for the hill is a good idea in this tank, because you're quite quick. And it's probably your best option, but it's not without its dangers, because your gun depression is so abominably crap that you have to expose more... I mean, it, it would be... If you had decent gun depression and you could poke that 120mm armoured turret just over the top of the of the hill and shoot at what was on the other side, that would be great. But unfortunately, the gun depression is so bad, you have to expose your hull as well. And that will get penetrated every time. But what are your alternatives? Trade and fire with tank destroyers at one end of a street from the you know, from one end of a street to the other? <laughs> so Going up the hill is probably your best choice, certainly in this game, at this tier, it's only a tier 6 match. And we're not completely alone, we've got a Hellcat with us, but his armor's even worse than ours. And uh, a T-50, very bravely following us too. So here's the dangerous part, coming around this corner. If there's anything waiting on the other side of that rubble, we're in deep trouble. And it turns out we haven't seen him, and he hasn't seen us, but he's waiting for somebody to do this, and there you go, it's a Hellcat. And of course we fire, and the shot goes nowhere near where we'd aimed, and just blows his tracks off. So he gets two into us, and we get one into him, but now he's got problems there, there's a Hellcat on his flank, and oh, T1 heavy. And we miss, because that's just what this gun does. It seems to miss every other shot. That was a good hit. Well, oh, back up. He will have reloaded. Okay, our tracks took that one. No actual damage taken. And wait for it to aim. We will miss. Hellcat hits him, and we finish him off. So, that could have been a lot worse. All just depends on what's down the other side of this hill now. 
So if we take it slow and easy, use the wreck of the T1 as cover, and there doesn't seem to be anything there. I would have expected maybe to see the Sturmpanzer. You can get some speed up going down this hill. 55 km per hour top speed, we're doing 65 kph coming down here. And there's that nice, tight, 40 degree turning circle. It's really good. And we go airborne, and... Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we'll have some of that. It's what I was hoping for. Come up behind the tank destroyers on this road. But we only have 249 health left, so we're going to need to be careful. Although... I mean, if we get killed at this point, it's just unlucky. We're winning 11-3. And I do have two kills, so not bad. All they have left is another 3001H and a T-34. And I don't know where these guys are going, because the enemy tanks are over there. And they're going for our artillery, and they're probably going to kill him. Come on, gun. Don't fail me now. Hit something. No, of course not. Oh. And that's what I mean. This, this, this gun, it just seems to miss with every other shot. Like half of your shots just don't go anywhere near where you've aimed. At medium to long range, it is not a long range work gun. It, it's a brawling gun. And this is not a brawling tank, and that's kind of the problem. So another tier 8 game. Uh, not as many of them this time. And uh, we're here on Live Oaks, and I do kind of like this map. But it's the kind of map that favours certain tanks over others. Um, and it doesn't favour the 3001H. And we're going to see this 88mm gun failing to behave itself. Here we go. Choice of two targets. And watch this. Where did that shot go? How did that miss? Watch this awful gun depression. Try to aim. I mean, we penetrated this turret anyway. I was trying to aim for his hull, but I just. I would have had to poke my nose out of that bush in order to get the gun down low enough to hit his hull. As it happens, you know, penetrated his uh, turret anyway, so that's alright. And there's that awful gun depression again. I just cannot get that gun down. And whoa, here they come. I'm going to have to expose myself to all sorts of fire to, to hit these guys. Um, and it's just not worth it. Because shots from the front of this tank have a really annoying habit of killing your driver. Because he has no armour protection. So ideally, I really want to be backing up and going around. And there you go. Oof. Amex 5100. Luckily, tracks absorbed it, but we took another hit there from, I'm not sure what, 255 damage. So I've had enough of going over there. I'm going to go around here, try to get some flanking fire on them. One hit taken. Took a third of my health off. 750 feels like a lot, but it is not a lot of health in a tier 8 game. And that's super purging. Come on, come on, come on, don't miss. Oh, typical. This gun can do 220, and of course, when you need it to, it doesn't. And there's another hit from the Super Pershing. And now, you've got a choice of all these tanks to shoot at. And who do you think artillery is going to take a pop out? 
It's a bit of a loaded question, really, isn't it? The tiger on 14 health. <laughs> and there you go. And you're going to see this happen a lot when you're driving the 3001H and there's artillery in play. This is not an isolated incident. Artillery loves shooting at 3001Hs because they're so incredibly easy for artillery to kill. Now, believe it or not, since I bought this thing again, that's actually one of the better games that I've had in this tank. But you can see the problems that we have. Um, and they chiefly relate to the gun and obviously the armour. Uh, that very first shot that I fired at the AMX 5100, I mean, first of all, I was lucky enough to come across a tank that I could penetrate at that range with this gun. And my aiming circle completely covered the tank. Where did the shot go? <laughs> how, how can that possibly have missed? There was nowhere inside that aiming circle that didn't have enemy tank in it, and yet it just totally missed. <laughs> um... And, 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 you know, that's just what the L56 88mm gun does sometimes. But, you know, you can't judge a tank on the vagaries of a, of a, of a buggy gun. Um, you know, I mean, there are a lot of German tanks that use that gun. But, well, here we go. We actually hit and penetrated the 3002 DB, so that's not bad. Um, we got... Uh, we spotted the M26, but there was only 106 damage done to him while we were spotting him, so that could have been better. But there was a fair, you know, and again, 163 hull damage done to the AMX 5100 while we were spotting him. We hit him twice for 383 damage, which is kind of low, but what the hell. Finished off that Tiger, but we only managed to do 14 damage to him. That's all he had left by the time we could get a shot into him. And, yeah, it's just not good, you know, it's... It's 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 all right, but it, it's not it's not good. Now we only did 610 damage in a gun that does an average of 220 per shot. That's really 610. I mean, that's four penetrations, but that's really just three penetrating hits. That, that amount of damage. In fact, that's less than what you'd expect from three penetrating hits. That's crap. It's awful. But yeah. what can you do? You know, when the enemy Hummel driver just going around looking for the targets that are on the lowest health <laughs> rather than shooting at the targets that are the biggest threat I mean, and that's why that team lost and lost horribly and deserved to because this guy was a retard sorry but you are you are just absolutely hopeless look at that how does a Hummel only do 420 damage from two hits because he shoots at tanks that have 200 health left <laughs> so you sucked and contributed towards your team failing horribly which is good it's just unfortunate that I was one of the low health unfortunates he decided to shoot at but you know I, I get that a lot it's not a fault of the tank it's just you know the people who play the game but it just doesn't I don't know like I said that's one of the better games I've had in this tank since I rebought it and it's just such a chore to play. I, I, I never get that, yeah, let's have a game in the 3001H feeling. <laughs> just doesn't happen. Um, I mean, I think, let's have a go in the E50M, and then I check how much money I've got to see if I can afford to have a go in the E50M, because it just hemorrhages money. But I do want to have a go in the E50M. Uh, I've never found myself thinking, hmm... Let's have a game of World of Tanks. I know, what should we play? Yeah, let's have a go in the 3001H. No, no, that doesn't happen. It's been, well, I've got to do a 3000... Uh, forgotten how to speak. It's more a case of, well, I've got to do a 3001H replay. Uh, all right, here we go. Uh, and that's what it's like, driving this thing. It's, you know, it's all right. It's just... It's just not good. Uh, yeah, you could write that on this tank's tombstone, you know. Yeah, it was all right, just wasn't very good. Well, slightly better matchmaking this time. Um, it's Serene Coast's tier seven game, and there's two T3485s and a T43 here, so I had high hopes of a medium tank wolf pack going up that way, which 
could have done well. And initially, because these guys are all basically as fast as me. They just have better armour. And arguably, with that 85mm, better guns as well. And, okay, well, the T-43 is coming with me. The two t 34 85s don't appear to know what they're doing. They're just sitting there. And here's this absolutely god-awful gun depression at work again. Okay, I'm going to need to ram this fella. And he hits us. And then we have to back, we actually have to back up to be able to put a shot into him. And I'm not going to go chasing after that T-50 while all these guys are sitting on my flank. So I'm just going to try to get into cover here. But look at that. 59% health after one encounter and one shot from an ELC AMX. It's a Sherman Jumbo down there, and again, look at this. Oh, he's pointing his gun at me. Crap. Hits my tracks, that's lucky. And I just can't penetrate the Sherman Jumbo from the front. With an 88mm gun. I mean, really? Yep, unfortunately, really. So, wh where's all the rest of the mediums? <laughs> Guys, hello. Well, the two T-3485 still haven't moved out of the starting turn. And I've got a damaged T-43 sitting in the middle of an open field. Sideways on to all those guns. Oh, oh crap. And there's an easy eight. Ugh. So, there are probably worse positions that I could be in, but... Right now I'm hard-pressed to think of what they are. I can't move back because I'll get shot in the flank by all those guys down there in the middle. And, and where those guys are, that's normally a bloody death trap, but they're just commanding the battlefield from there because none of our tanks will move forward. And if I move up... Yeah. And I'm just going to get taken apart by this EZ-8. And I cannot go over the rise to get to him. And oh, look, there's a T-50 again. So I'm screwed no matter which way I go here. And I just... And the performance of this gun, it ranges in excess of 100 metres, is shit. It is so bad. Historically, this gun would knock out Shermans at two kilometre distance. And obviously you can't have that in this game because none of the maps are bigger than a kilometre across. But it can't penetrate the front of a Sherman Jumbo from... 200 meters. <laughs> What's going on? Uh. So, you know, there you go, and it's just it's just more of the same. The gun depression on this thing is absolutely hopeless. You have to... This is a tank that you do not ever want to be exposing to enemy fire, but the gun depression is so hopelessly bad that if you want to shoot anything, you have to first take a hit. <laughs> because it's the only way to get the gun down on the target. Uh, and you can't be doing that in this thing, because absolutely everything penetrates you. Uh, it's just... it's the wrong... it's just the wrong gun for this tank. But it's better than any of the others. Um, this thing... this thing needs something rapid firing. Um, I suppose you could argue... that maybe I should be using... Uh, in fact, you know what? I'll have a go with the L70 that gun there. Because the rate of fire is almost its almost twice as good as on the 88. And the penetration is better, and it's more accurate. Just the damage is lacking. I mean, that's pitiful damage for a tier 6 tank. Um, well, it's not that bad. I mean, it's the same damage as the... Uh, in fact, it's slightly better damage and much more penetration than the 
guns that the Americans have, and it's more accurate. So maybe that's the gun I should be using, because this 88mm, it's just not up to the job. I mean, it works fine on this thing, the 3601H. It really does work fine on that tank, because this tank's got armour. Stag has something that the 3001H doesn't have. You can get up close to enemy tanks with this thing and just laugh as they bounce shots off you, and then hurt them with that with that gun. You know, medium to close range. You can't do that with this thing because it it, it it it'll get close enough to start putting this gun to, to use, but it'll be half dead by the time it gets there, and the engine will be damaged and the driver will be dead. Um, so let's give the long 75 a run out and see if we can do any better with this. Because, you know, we couldn't really do much worse. And as luck would have it, um, I, I mean, I couldn't have asked better than this. Uh, it's practically exactly the same as the earlier game on Live Oaks, except this time it's better matchmaking tier 7. Started in the same position, it's the same map as, as earlier with the 88. So, perfect. So I've got the long 75 fitted, the L70. And we'll see if that suits this tank better. So we're going to try doing the same thing. And hopefully the SU-8 won't make me a priority target this time. As the Hummel did on the previous one. <laughs> Just occurred to me, you know, I really have to stop calling people out specifically, individually, and saying that they're crap, like I did the Hummel driver in that previous game, because you know he's going to turn out to be one of my subscribers, and <laughs> he's going to get upset. Anyway, here we go. And there you go, crappy gun depression, and I have to keep inching forward in order to be able to aim at anything coming over that bridge. But the T20's moved up, and he looks like he's waiting for company, so, yeah, okay. Let's go down, follow him around. Sherman behind us. Yeah, don't wait for me to go first, mate, because I'm not going to. Well, maybe I am. No, yeah, he's coming with me, that's fine. Oh, T-34. And... How did that miss? Seriously, how did that miss? Okay, the second shot, yeah. But the first shot, and... Uh, what is going on with this tank? Doesn't matter what gun you fit to it. Shots just... Ugh. Did it with the 88 when the AMX 5100 filled my aiming reticle. It did it with that T34 when he filled my aiming reticle. The shot just didn't appear to leave the barrel. It certainly didn't go anywhere. T43 over there. Who has disappeared? And I'm not sitting around on top of this railway line. I'm going to need to get down there, get into cover, get off this railway line. And go and follow that T20, give him some help. Oh, and there's a KB1S with us. That's good. And he's got the 122mm gun. That's even better. Uh, and that's an SU-152. So I need to get down here. I don't want to get hit by him. His gun will penetrate and do full damage to me. And potentially one shot kill me. So I do not want that to happen. And, yep, he's pointing his gun this way. So I am not going over Remember the crappy gun depression, he'll get a free shot at me before I can fire at him. So I'm going to wait for him to turn. And there's a Hellcat. So, yeah, this suddenly got not good. Okay, the SU-152's turned. But the Hellcat's an easier target now. Um, yeah, we've got a hit, that's good. And the reverse speed on this thing, yeah, I've got credit where credit's due. It does have very, very good reverse speed, so you can back out of trouble quite quickly. Fast enough that that Hellcat wasn't able to get a return shot into us. Uh, I need to keep an eye on which way this guy's turret's pointing. Unfortunately, it takes me so long... Oh, crap. T-43. Okay. Uh, that was a lucky bounce. Must hit the turret. Right. Now, this was a spot of luck. And I must admit, I didn't expect this. I fully expected this T-43... To ignore the KV-1S and concentrate on killing me, because he can kill me, and he's going to have problems killing that KV-1S, but he doesn't. And so, we managed to get a kill. And save that KV-1S. But again, here's that whole gun depression problem. 
Uh oh. And bounced off his gun mantle. Well, the SU 152 is dead. And again, I need to play the whole watch which way his gun's pointing game. And completely missed again. I don't even understand how that's possible. We got one into him. And, oh look, artillery's shooting at me. <laughs> well, that never happens. <sighs> Use the repair kit. Get moving. Get the hell out of here. Sitting here on 68 health. And there's all sorts of tanks on the flank there. So let's put some distance between me and them. Get some solid cover between me and them. Uh, because they're shooting at me. And what do we got? Kind of hard to tell. Uh, well, it's a T-34-85 over there. And, um, you know, absolutely everything can one-shot kill me at this point. Ah, uh, no. Hello. KV-1S. Uh, he's AFK in the start, so... Alright. I'll get some cheap experience out of this guy. Penetration. I know that I'm going to penetrate him with every hit. With this 75mm, whereas the 88 might not have. Okay, the T-34-85 is dead, so the left flank is secure. I know the SU-85 is over there somewhere as well, but on 68 health, I don't want to be another statistic in this game. I'm going to grab some invader points and let the rest of the team kill them. T20's going for it. He's played a decent game. Oh, he's got two kills and he hasn't taken a single point of damage. Well played to him. There goes the SU-85. And there goes the SU-8. So, yeah. We got some invader points. And they still managed to get all the kills. So, good result for everyone. So, I think we can safely say that the L70 75mm gun is the gun that I, you should probably really have been using on this tank from the start. That 88mm is a, is a fine, medium brawling tank gun, but this is not a medium brawling tank. It's, it's, a, it's a light tank with a heavy tank turret and a medium tank gun. Um, it's just such a mix of stats, and, and they just don't work together. Nevertheless, uh, from the choice of guns available on this thing, there are really only two choices. There's the L70 75mm, which we can see here, or there's that 88mm L56. And while that 88mm L56 works really, really well on tanks like the 3601H, because the 3601H has got the armour, and it's still quite fast, it does 40 kilometers per hour, it can get to close and medium range where you need to be with that gun to make it work. And, uh, and it can survive that kind of fight. The 3001H can't. It, it, can, it can get to the range where it needs to be, to use that gun effectively, but by the time it gets there, the driver's dead and the tank's on 50% health. Uh, and you just die. You just die a lot in this tank. And so I feel that the 75mm just gives you more options. Um, the damage output is pretty weedy, but the sustained DPM is pretty good. And you, you can do more things with that gun than you can with the 88 on this tank. You, you can snipe with this gun. It's accurate enough for it, and the penetration is good enough. The, the 88 really suffers at anything over 200 meter range, where it just doesn't have the penetration. Uh, the velocity of the shell just isn't enough. It just doesn't sustain penetration at range. The 75 millimeter does, on the other hand. The penetration is better to start off with and it just seems to maintain the penetration because it's a high velocity 75mm shell. So it gives you more options I think using that. Uh, that works just, it just works better on this tank. I wouldn't recommend using that gun on the 3601H. Um, the 88 is the gun to use on the 3601H but I think the 75 is the gun to use on this thing. But even with the 75 it's, it's the tank just isn't very good and I think that's why you don't see many of them on the battlefield. Um, 
Actually, I think the major reason why you don't see many of them or many of them on the battlefield is most people just stick the 88 on because they think, well, it's the top gun. It, it must be the one to use, and then they just can't make it work, and, and that's a mistake. In my opinion, anyway, I, I definitely feel that that long 75 is the way to go on this tank. But it's still not very good. <laughs> um, it, it's just not a very good tank. It's not a bad tank. It's not bad like the M3 Lee is bad. Um, but it's hard to do well in this thing. Um, and, you know, that some people, that's exactly what they look for. Um, there are a lot of people who, who enjoy the challenge. Um, and this tank is a challenge. <laughs> Make no mistake about that. You can do very well in this thing. I have done very well in this thing. Um, as I said, I've got my Top Gun in this, and that was back when the matchmaking meant this thing got into Tier 9 games. But you can't count on it. it it's a, you need to be good to do well in this tank. Uh, and for a lot of people, um, that's just too much effort. <laughs> too much effort to waste on a Tier 6. Um, yeah, and, and that's fine. You, know, you play the game the way you want to play the game. So my summary of the 3001H would probably have to be, it's it's all right, uh, and that you know that's kind of uninspiring, and and so's the tank. It's not terrible, but it's not very good either. There you go, the 3001H Tier 6 German medium tank. It's a bit of a shame, but it is what it is. Now before we sign off, I just wanted to have a quick word about my replay contest. Um, Gold prizes for the winners in four categories, is that right? Light tank, medium tank, heavy tank, tank destroyer, artillery. No, five categories. I have almost 400 replays, and I'm sure by the time the deadline reaches us on the 31st of October that I will have over 400 replays. So I'm going to take a break from uploading um, these replays and reviews from the 31st of October because I'm going to need a couple of days to go through the replays. So don't be surprised if on the 1st of November and possibly the 2nd of November as well, you don't see my usual upload every day, because I'm just going to be swamped going through all the replays that people have submitted. So uh, just I wanted to warn you that that was going to happen. Uh, I'm going to need the time to go through the replays and then edit the replay videos and present uh, the winners and so on and so on and so on. So there you go, forewarned is forearmed. Hope you're not going to be too upset going without your daily dose of jingles for a couple of days, but unfortunately I'm going to need the time to concentrate on the replays because I don't want you to be waiting weeks and weeks and weeks to find out whether or not you've won any gold and get your video uh, previewed on my channel. So there you go. Um, hopefully we'll have some, well I know we've got some good, some good games. I've watched some of them already and there's some fantastic games in the replays. So we're going to have some good, uh, some good content when I announce the winners of the replay contest, uh, hopefully in within less than a week. So, uh, in the meantime, take care on the battlefield, and as always, I'll catch you next time. Bye, folks.